Since the dawn of civilization, people have made their decisions about where to live based on their surroundings. How well those surroundings facilitated the people's movement from place to place was of major importance. The earliest migration and transportation routes were provided by mountain passes, rivers and oceans as people moved to follow their food supply, escape their enemy, search for treasure and share their goods. In the late 18th century Upper Canada, it was no different. First Nations people were following their trails and canoeing the rivers and lakes to hunt and to fight, and certainly for enjoyment as well. The first non-natives arrived in this area looking for freedom from their rebellious brothers to the south and for the promised land where they could make their new home and possibly their fortune. They came by boat, by wagon and by foot along the waterways and through the forests. In the early days, the Coburg Harbour we know today didn't exist, and the shoreline presented a cedar swamp. A few miles west, what we now know as Port Hope presented a much superior anchorage. So the beginnings of Coburg were developed not by the lake, but on the inland road that connected York to Kingston. The first community was given the name Amherst. But it wasn't long before more settlers were arriving in the Canadas. Soon large numbers of immigrants arrived from the old countries of England, Scotland, Wales and especially Ireland, choosing the horrific conditions and dangers of transatlantic travel rather than persecution or starvation. Even without a developed harbour, Coburg provided the ideal place to disembark for those heading to the backwoods beyond Rice Lake, where Peter Robinson was developing a settlement, later given the name Peterborough. To be more than just a stopping place on the way to somewhere else, Coburg needed a proper harbour. Coburg Harbour Company was formed, and within four years had a pier stretching some 500 feet into the lake. Its completion brought increased development to the town and an era of relative prosperity. Situated as it was approximately halfway between York and Kingston, Coburg soon had a significant part to play in land travel, especially with the arrival of stagecoach magnate William Weller. But with the development of the steam engine, the stagecoach soon was eclipsed by the railroad. Much of Coburg's later history was determined by its dreams of a railway line running north to Peterborough. Fortunes were invested and lost in those dreams, and the failure of the Coburg and Peterborough Railway still resonates today. Of course, a whole new era dawned with the development of the automobile and gradual improvement of the system of roads. What was once a day's travel under very uncomfortable conditions is now an hour's jaunt taken in air-conditioned comfort. A warm welcome to all who have come any distance to be with us today. Take a moment to imagine making that same trip 200 years ago.